he comes from a very humble background today he is recognized as one of the leading researcher in the field of marine benthic fauna both nationally and internationally he had been a member of india's expeditions to antarctica three times he has played a significant role in discovery and recognizing ecological sensitivity of angria bank of the coast of maharashtra in arabian sea it is his and his colleagues work will soon result in angria bank being declared as india's first offshore marine protected area he is someone who has been my close friend for over 3 decades but most importantly two of us are each other's best critic i have a great pleasure in having dr baban ingole as a guest on this episode of vishwas in conversation in inviting uh, dr uh, baban ingole baban welcome to vishwas in conversation namaskar thank you vishwas for inviting me uh, for this conversation so we, let's let's just start this journey of dialogue and discussions with uh, your childhood uh, vishwas uh, my childhood have been wonderful and uh, i would uh, cherish those memories uh, like uh, you know although i came from a very you know lower middle class family a farmer's family uh, born in a very small village of maharashtra particularly drought prone marathwada region hingoli district however uh, the family you know saw it that i get the maximum thing what i you know required at that age we had a good farming uh, during those time uh, both my parents they were uh, you know involved in agriculture and uh, i had a school particularly primary school in our village and then uh, i moved to the high school which was around 8 to 10 km from my hometown and i used to walk every day up and down 8 plus 8 km it was a fun the those days you know uh, there were no electricity no uh, concrete road it was a small footpath uh, type of road and uh, half the way we had our agriculture farm so walking uh, to the school was half way through the farming and then while coming i used to come not on the road but then take a cross and go to the field and come and then enjoy moreover i had very good friends both in the school and uh, also in the village so childhood uh, definitely i cherish is always because uh, i enjoyed it more than the schooling there was no pressure of uh, you know homework no pressure uh, of your assignment and all those things so uh, i have enjoyed it like anything after passing uh, uh, my high school then i went to uh, aurangabad where i did my you know bsc although my family wanted that i should go for the medical i had uh, you know uh, 
from the beginning almost eighth standard i had decided that i want to do the phd and therefore i enrolled myself uh, into the bsc science in aurangabad under the that time uh, marathwada university in milin college of science immediately after my bsc i uh, enrolled for the msc uh, msc in zoology however simultaneously during the transition period after my bsc result i had applied for maharashtra government's merit scholarship and somehow uh, midway first semester of msc first year was on the way and i got a interview call from the konkan agriculture university and they invited me for the interviews which i attended and i was selected for the msc uh, fisheries by research and that's how i landed from maratwada to the konkan came to the ratnagiri then i did my msc from msc in fisheries uh, from the konkan agriculture university and that was in 7981 i you know applied to the national institute of oceanography under the csir there was a advertisement again while doing the msc it was there and uh, i came down to goa for a interview somewhere in 81 early 81 uh, came not to you know looking for the job but that time it was uh, you know goa was an attraction and i was in university so i thought i'll just go to goa because i was doing my master final year i wanted to complete my master and not looking exactly for the job that time so that's how i came for the interview however here also to my luck the interview was very well and uh, uh, i was not knowing that i will get selected so i was very bold in answering the some of the questions but i was very fresh from the bsc i was you know second in the bsc in the maratwada university so my uh, fundas was very clear so the interview went very well and uh, i went back uh, not expecting anything however within a month time i got uh, in fact a uh, uh, letter of appointment joined in 1981 as a stock photography in june so from your childhood uh, to your masters degree well everything must not be hunky dory everything wasn't that smooth of course Talk about some of the lessons that you learned and uh, some of the individuals when you look back you think they made an influence uh, the way your career has shaped and first and most uh, certainly my parents my mother particularly was very meticulous uh, being from the farming family she was the one who used to do the you know planning maintaining and those time we had everything in the agriculture as far as the crop is concerned however there is a crunch of money unless you sell some you know agriculture product you can you cannot get money to pay even your school fee or travel some so it was directly dependent on the agriculture product so from there i have a very good uh, you know memory is that how we used to save the money to buy the books save the money when the school is going to open for the school dress and bags and all those things uh, when the it is going to open uh, there was no problem because house used to be full of agriculture product but no bank balance that is the you know Um, you know, difference it was there. So I learned from my mother from those days in childhood how money is important. During my you know MSc, my MSc research guide, Dr. Girish Shirgur, who was the dean at time of the Fisheries Faculty in Konkan Agriculture University, and he is the one who has changed uh, my thinking about the you know. looking at the western looking at the you know career in fact he was the one who launched me into the research because after immediately after bsc i joined i was not knowing much about all the ambition was to do the phd however i was not knowing what exactly the research means 
what are the methodology how to proceed he was a very good person very strict by the way he at but then that that is how you know uh, i said he has shaped my research career from the beginning uh, dr shilbur was one of them who has shaped uh, my you know, research career in the beginning you have spent uh, almost your entire career in goa life in goa has shaped you who you are so i would like to start with your uh, early days in the marine biology division of the national institute of oceanography there were some people who were uh, very good you know in you know encouraging me shaping my early research career uh, there was uh, uh, one person by name dr uh, t s s ra and uh, he is the one actually who was responsible for you know bringing me to the goa or in i i in fact was not very keen as i told when i came for interview uh, i in fact replied in the interview when they asked me when are you going to join so i said no i don't want to join so i was little bit young and you know i should have not done certainly that way but then when i said they were laughing at me and then dr t s rao even scolded me very much that you are a young boy you should know how to you know, respond but then uh, they were very happy with the, the way i was and then dr t s rao t s s rao has certainly encouraged me from the beginning so he uh, dr t s s rao put up me with uh, dr parlekar uh dr parlekar again is the person who has you know almost uh, uh, 50% of my you know entire research career i have spent with him and uh, he is the one who has encouraged me to go beyond what uh, you know uh, i think so he is to you know if i go with uh, some ideas or some proposal he is to put his ideas and he will never say no go ahead that is how you know i i got encouragement from both dr t s s rao and dr parlekar for shaping uh, and taking the things but most important thing was the hard work when i was introduced in nio you know, we had a research vessel gaveshini and they were already moving the antarctic expedition so it was a busy time and uh, they were planning uh, uh, planning for the first antarctic expedition and i was introduced into that group so the from day one i was involved in antarctic programs the training from the day one i got it about the uh, cruises expeditions because that was the you know time so it has certainly helped a lot because of the people with whom i was put up and they have given me you know the free hand to you know shaping and that's how i have got the training most important is the honesty and hard work these are the two key i can say words for the success what it, it people were watching me uh, moving and uh, they were they were assessing themselves and that's how they were encouraging me to go ahead many people have read about antarctic some have watched antarctic through documentaries and uh, movies so talk about the genesis as to why we as a nation are spending on antarctic research or polar research and in specific your uh, actual uh, uh, experiences of uh, three antarctic expeditions that you have been on board the research vessel antarctic uh, uh... expedition and antarctica as a whole is a very important chapter in my life i have uh, spent my early career days and uh, years together almost 5 6 years if we can put together uh, of the active uh, research and the early research uh, career in antarctic research so uh, that's why it is very important as you mentioned that antarctica for the nation it is certainly very important and uh, because of its proximity to the indian ocean and india one is the historically it has been india was a part of antarctica and the resources was uh, you know what 
the potentials of resources are there and future of those resources if we look at it india being the you know developing country during that time to venture into the antarctic program it was it itself was a big surprise to the developed countries that but we have done a uh, tremendous and uh, we had uh, you know presently two uh, antarctic research stations which are operational the third one the first one which was there that was the chin gangotri uh, that has been closed now but right now we have maitri and bharti are operational and uh, indian scientists are doing very good work both on geology atmospheric science life sciences and as a whole uh, antarctic program is quite promising and we need this one because of the presence of the third world uh, in the antarctica because of the future resources and to protect the uh, overall interest of the humanity in antarctica india is playing very important role and thus that's what i can summarize as far as the antarctica is concerned however there is one very important component again antarctica is there, that the people we have visited antarctica we, with various programs they will tell you that antarctica itself is a challenge for the humanity because of the climatic conditions and the isolation for you have got so you definitely when you come back you change your you know approach towards the life as a whole because it is not easy to adjust to those you know that type of environment particularly if you are spending winter there around you know 18 20 months you definitely your you know approach to life is changes and accordingly you uh, also change uh, or looking at the life uh, how much uh, how many months in total you have spent in antarctica in three expeditions put together uh, must have been uh, one and a half year at least definitely okay together yeah so so you were not part of the winter expeditions no i was all all three expeditions i was summer uh, party okay so talk of talk to people those who are watching this uh, conversation about the life about the day in antarctica how does the scientist uh, stay there in such an extreme situations what kind of research in specific you did in those three expeditions and thereafter um, yes uh, if you look at it look back to the antarctic uh, program as such things have been changed over a period of time now this is more than now 30 35 years uh, uh, since it is ongoing program however the early expeditions when we started we were you know not having the station as such for example and uh, we had to spend most of our time in the tents and uh, summer and winter life is different thing because summer you have 24 hours you know uh, light whereas winter you have 24 hours of dark you can say that's how it is you know generally described although our station is uh, not at the exactly south pole so we don't have six month night and six month uh, day exactly but Uh, almost three month darkness we have got it three four months 24 hours light we get it so uh, summer expedition is you know plan in such a way that we reach during the you know that 24 hours light period lot of work can be done both in, uh, you know construction or maintenance of the station as well as the field work because you get more exposure for doing the you know research field work uh, winter is difficult definitely because of the you know temperature is very much down even in our station it is uh, dakshin gangotri is to be around minus 50 during the winter time so uh, temperature is very low and then it is the darkness so your outdoor activities research field work and all those is restricted so the people definitely do it even during the winter also but restrictions are there both from the climate as well as from the you know temperature and uh, uh, light conditions in that uh food when you say as all of us we know that antarctica stores the maximum fresh water of, of the of the world however it is not the free flowing fresh water it is in the frozen so uh, you don't have to carry fresh water 
except for the journey period when you have you you know going uh, via you know voyage ship when you go at the station or the uh, during the winter or uh, all the station activity we use the uh, ice for the melting so water is available so rest except the fresh water rest of the thing everything you have to carry from here you don't get uh, you know anything which is directly you can consume although fishery is quite rich there you cannot just simply catch the fish because it's frozen and you don't have the gear to catch the fish fish for the commercial consumption this purpose is different so people may say that we have plenty of fish there so there's no problem it's not that easy you have to carry even the fish also most of the almost 99% what we eat there we carry from as far as the research is concerned what i conducted i was involved every time when the team goes or individual when it is selected it is meticulously done every individual will have a research problem or a group will you know uh, uh, propose a problem uh, and then they pursue the problem so here i was part of national institute of oceanography team all the three expedition and we had a, a problem either given by the ministry or we have you know jointly proposed the problem and did it for example you know the uh, one of the expedition when i was there i was given assignment for studying the uh, fresh water systems uh, which was supposed to be used for the drinking purpose for the maitri station so we did uh, 10 15 lakhs did a detailed study of the you know fresh water lakes in that all the ecology limnology potability most important because the drinking so we did the myself and one of my colleague dr jokim goes we we were the two you know indians we did the scuba diving in the you know uh, one of the lake which is called zub lake or priyadarshini lake where the maitri station is located and that data was very useful we did the potability and potential of the water so carry capacity of the that lake in terms of how much water will be there how long it will be useful for the for the station and if if it is to be used for drinking purpose how can we use it what type of treatment is required uh, all that study in, was conducted by one of the expedition as next expedition when i was you know selected or as a part of the team a specific target was given for us to study the krill fishery you know krill is the key species in antarctica because all the food web marine food web as uh, in antarctica depends on the krill and therefore how much krill is available in the indian ocean sector of antarctica because that is approachable for us even if we go for future fishing or you know uh, research it should be logistically also feasible so indian ocean sector we call it which is you know when we pass the so what, where where is the krill available how much quantity it is available what depth it is available what type of ecology of krill ecology is there there and if we go for the commercial fishing in future what are the necessary parameters so that was given to us and i studied all those things in one of the expedition uh, the last expedition which i participated there was uh, another target given to our team and that was to study the human impact on antarctic environment both on the land and in the sea so you know looking at that you know what are the care we should go because that is one of the pristine area so if we are doing any disturbance what type of impact it has occurred and what care needs to be taken subsequently so that was another target given to our team so one of the thing that uh, probably you would recognize as a turning point or a turning milestone in your life is the fellowship that you received to visit japan and to work at the nagasaki university talk about the research and education system in japan uh, your experience because i believe you were in japan together with Uh, the family as well uh the japanese lifestyle the lessons or the teachings that you had there thank you vishwas bringing that point because that is another chapter uh, and important uh, also 
uh, I uh, was selected in 1988 for the Japanese government Mobusho Fellowship. And uh, it was very, very helpful, I can tell you. The Japanese education system you, you mentioned about it is very fantastic, you know. The people have been taught about the research project, research problem at very early, at a high school stage actually. And they have been given the freedom, the students have been given the freedom to select the topic and their career at that stage. And that's how they groom them uh, for that research. And that's why Japanese research, you know, uh, you know, from the early period was much ahead because they were dealing with the problem from the very early age. And when we are talking about the dealing of the problem, that problem is directly applicable in the society. Be it any field. I was in the fisheries, so they were looking at new fishery related products which are helpful, particularly as a food product. Japanese uses marine product almost 70% in their daily thali or what we say, they say, you know, bento, obento, that is, uh, you know, pack lunch. Uh, in that, almost 70% is related to the fish or fishery product. It could be seaweed, it could be fish, it could be processed fish or it could be fresh fish. But that is how. And then because there is a demand and they uh, try to introduce every year new product, new seaweed species or new fish, uh, which is earlier was not eligible, and therefore the market oriented research they do. Professors, they are you know, very good fellows, particularly when, when managing the projects. And that's how we did. it has helped me a lot. Uh, important thing is, as we all know that the difference between us and them is they do individually everything. Whereas we get it done the thing with the help of others. So doing it and getting, getting it done. That is the difference what we have in our system and then Japanese system I can. What was the learnings from Japanese life that you think each one of us can imbibe in our own uh, life and our behavior in the society? Oh, uh, there are many things, but uh, I can tell one very important thing is Japanese don't waste even a single grain of rice. So, how to use the food, not not waste. So we should not waste any anything related to food. That is one thing they teach to the babies when they start eating. From that point, that food is very important. We should not waste. Second thing is simultaneously. What they teach the babies and what Japanese practice is the nature, the observations. They almost 100% eat the fish and you know uh, non-veg items. However, they care so much of the nature and probably that is what has come from the Buddhism. You know, how, you, how much you should, you know, how you should care for the nature. So uh, that is another thing what I have you know, learned from them that you know, from the childhood, they, you know, uh, how, how, how do you take care of the nature? A third important thing is about the hard, hard work. When somebody is paying you, you should be honest and do your more than 100%, not just 100%. You should give in return more than 100% so that your employees or the you know, country as a whole will be benefited from that. And that's how you are living also and country also will progress. So these are the three you know, important things of the life, I thought. So talk about the five most significant research contributions of uh, Dr. Baba Ningole. Uh, I would certainly start with the Antarctica. The work I did it in Antarctic freshwater lakes and uh, you know the ecology of the freshwater lake. Second one is the you know the work I did it in the deep sea, particularly the biodiversity of the deep sea associated with the mineral resource 
Third one is, you know, the offshore environmental monitoring around the coast, particularly with respect to the ONGC. Third one, the environmental monitoring around the coast, particularly for the, you know, fisheries and the biodiversity hotspots and the pollution hotspots. And the last one, I can say it about the coastal aquaculture, how, how we can increase the aquaculture production, particularly with, with the help of the simple techniques of the mussels and oyster culture, we can enhance it. So these are five points. I can, I can start it uh, one, which is uh, certainly about the Antarctic as a uh, little bit I mentioned it. Second one, as you are aware, um, I, my almost uh, out of the four decades of my you know, work in NIO, almost three decades, I have been in the deep sea. And uh, I have been involved from the day one of my career in the deep sea mission program that is uh, mineral resources of the deep sea, which popularly we know is polymetallic nodule or PMN program. And uh, I was involved particularly for studying the environment biodiversity of the deep sea and during that time hardly there was any work done during the 80s uh, in the deep sea particularly at the depth of five to six kilometer and beyond the equator in the indian ocean so we did the early work in the deep sea, uh, indian ocean particularly in the central indian basin where the uh, mineral deposits of the polymetallic nodules are there I'm, as i'm talking to you I'm involved in the program where India has presented an application to the seabed authority at Jamaica, where we would like to do the different trials for the mining. A third uh, uh, one I can say it is very important is around the coast of India. Now we have been able to do the assessment of the coastal waters in terms of the quality. Where are the hotspots of the biodiversity and where are the hotspots of the pollution? And how can we you know, use this information to mitigate the pollution and help the fisheries or revival of the fisheries as a whole? Uh, another important component, what I did it was uh, Bombay High, where I was involved almost for 15 years assessing the environmental impact of oil explore, uh, exploration in the Bombay High area and what are the necessities to you know, mitigate the, that impact. Another one important component what we did it for the coastal aquaculture. Mussels, clams and fish, but most important is biological cultivation. So develop the simple techniques where oysters and mussels can be cultured and it can be taken up on the large scale so the people, uh, coastal people can use those techniques for you know, uh, increasing the fish production as such. There's lots that Baban I conversed about, but that's in a part two. I'm leaving you with the impression of one of Baban's students about Baban as a mentor. See you in part two. I actually started my research career with him. He was a person who, you know, made me to the research. Uh, I still remember the time when he told me that we should apply for abroad. Uh, he made me to apply uh, to, you know, for a scholarship, dot PhD scholarship, through which I could go to Germany and did my PhD. His positive attitude, his aura, I mean, so many things. But uh, what I would tell you is uh, that thank you, whatever you have done for us, and. Uh, definitely will make you proud. Hope you have subscribed to this channel and if you have not then kindly do subscribe and don't forget to press the bell button.